It tests in me, tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how JSUS came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go! When you ask, be there. When you see, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, he cares. When you see, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Tells me that I'm never ever alone. I know how JSUS can count to us and gave his best. Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. I God know exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. When you see, he's there. When you knock, knock, knock. When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy to give a brief missions report today, um, just to go over what we did, how we found it, et cetera. We can go to the next slide. Yeah, so um, today I'll just be talking about the missions that took place from June 22nd to the 30th. Um, so we came back uh, just recently. And for this particular missions trip, this is the second time we went. If you guys recall, the first time was like a vision trip. So this time we were finally able to fulfill the different areas that we kind of saw and build partnerships. So um, the priorities that we had were threefold. And this is in no particular order, but they were to connect with local churches, two, to support the community, and three, to run VBS programs at various schools. Next slide. Yeah, so this is the first school that we were able to interact with, and this is called Iguana Creek. Um, and it's kind of located in a remote area of Belize, so if you don't have like a four-wheeler and it's raining, you're not gonna make it through. Um, the first time we went there, last time for the vision trip, we weren't able to actually interact with the students because there was like torrential downpour, so none of the students arrived for school. But this time we were able to meet them, and we realized like half of them don't speak uh, English, so it's a bit of a challenge, but luckily we had some translators there, including one of the teachers. Um, and this is one of the classrooms that, the main classroom that we were in, and this is where we actually did a lot of the worships and uh, the skits. Next slide. Um, so some of the activities that we did as part of our VBS program was to go over the Gospel of Luke. Um, Pastor John uh, worked with us to create a curriculum, and like I said, we did skits, worship, and reflection activities to share with the children. So um, these are some of the breakout classrooms that we did. Uh, the little ones are on the right. That's kind of like a kindergarten class. Um, that's a student named Makibar. He's really funny. You can see he drew a little bit in there with the booklets. Next slide. 
Um, we also did like a lunch program for them as well, and we're able to play outside with them and do a little bit of activities. So this is where you can see some of the students' creations. You can't see the first photo, but if you zoom in on it, it says, this is the boy John and this is the girl Korean Sophia. So we thought that was really cute. <laughs> yeah. Next slide. Um, the second school we went to was called St. Barnabas. This was a little bit more um, in the heart of the community, so it wasn't as remote. And they are pretty good at um, getting community engagement. So I'll speak about it a little bit more, but this was the school we were supposed to do a renovation project on. Next slide. So similar to Iguana, we shared the Gospel of Luke with the children through our worship, skits, and activities. Um, and you can see some of the children here um, also showing their creations. Next slide. Um, interesting fun fact, they invited us to their graduation, which is kind of a big deal in Belize. So we went, and on the left side, that's the missionaries we partnered with, um, kind of getting a shout out and an award for all of uh, their volunteer work that they've done with the school. Um, and as I've mentioned, we were supposed to do a painting renovation, but we were low on human power. So we bought everything and consulted the local tradesmen, and we purchased all of the materials and then gave it to Midar so they could do it. <laughs> um, but one fun fact is we were able to procure customized whiteboards for each of the classrooms. You don't see it here, but some of the classrooms were lacking like basic chalkboards, basic um, whiteboards. So we were able to get them customized and again, um, they would be installed. Okay, next slide. Um, this is our first church that we did, which was very interesting. It's called Church of Prophecy. Um, Funny story, we kind of got there early and we were standing around and no one was there. Um, and then all of a sudden you see this huge pickup pull up with like so many people and it's clearly over capacity. But um, that is the pastor that drives that pickup and he brings his entire like village, I guess, on there. Um, so they, they pulled up and we were able to meet them. And uh, this was our second day. So we were able to kind of pilot our VBS program with them and the parents showed up as well, which was really nice. Next slide. Yeah, these are some um, pictures of the children, um, and that's inside the church as well. Next slide. And June can talk about this one. Yeah, so um, on the last on the last Sunday we were there, we were invited to. Um, no, not a Sunday. It was a Friday. Sorry. Yeah, it was um, on the last Friday that we were there. One of the church, uh, one of the teachers from. Uh, uh, Iguana, uh, Elias, invited us to his home and also to his church's youth night. And there we were able to see, um, yeah, like it was, wait, sorry. Yeah, um, and they're having a youth night where we visited. So our team was able to get to um, know all the children and um, hear more about the church. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, next slide. So this is Belmopan Market. This is part of um, community engagement um, that we were doing. So Belmopan Market, I'm not sure if um, everyone was here for my first presentation. It's, um, it's an outdoor vendor market in the main capital city of Belize. It's quite busy, but a lot of the parents kind of show up at the break of dawn and they don't have childcare. So some of these kids are sleeping on cardboard boxes like under the tables. So what the missionaries did was they um, rented out a space like a tent and kind of run like a daycare slash uh, VBS. So we were able to partner with them to um, run a little bit of a program. So my boy Miguel on the left, he's lying down drawing. He, for example, is an example of um, his parents own a vendor across the street. Uh, sorry, not across the street, across from our tent. So when it's time, they just kind of show up. And then when it's time for the parents to go home, um, the kids are released. Uh, next slide. Uh, we were also able to meet students from Belize University. So uh, this is a picture of a couple of them. Uh, what's interesting is as we got to know them, we realized a lot of them are not from Belize. They're from the neighboring countries like Panama, Guatemala, or Colombia. Uh, they come to Belize to learn English because it is a former British colony. So the main language there is English. And then they go back. Um, but what was lovely was a lot of them got to know us and then they showed up while we were doing missions to volunteer with us and translate where um, Spanish was uh, mainly spoken. And Pastor John will speak on future opportunities. Thank you. 
Hey, thank you, Sarah and June. <clears throat> Yeah, so um, after the mission trip, we're still figuring things out, but there are um, four things that we identified as uh, potential opportunities or needs. It doesn't mean that we will do all of them or any of them, but these are the uh, four key areas where we need to look carefully and see if we can do it in a way that empowers the community uh, so that it doesn't create dependence back to us and, and they look to us as a, as a savior. One is that school really needs some sort of online tutoring, and they're very much for it. Um, because of the economic status, you have kids that just come up without prior, um, I don't know, JK, SK kind of experience where they may have learned to read and write. So, and, and they lack um, teachers to take care of those kids who went through that system and who didn't go through that system. So it's something that we can look forward to uh, engaging in. And as you know, Bridgeway, during COVID, for about three years, we did an online tutoring company called Seedway. So if you're interested in, and if this is something that uh, the church approves, we would love to see um, some sort of online tutoring happening. Uh, and then second thing is scholarship programs. We noticed that there were very intelligent uh, members of the community and we met such a member called, uh, her name is Maria, and she actually carried her high school diploma with her. And uh, when we're talking to her and says, yeah, I graduated from high school, and what's your plan? And she says, I have no plan, but let me show you my uh, diploma. And she's showing it with all the awards and accolades that she received upon her graduation. And she is so intelligent, so smart, has such an incredible uh, leadership skills but she can't further her education. There are other kids who, are, who doesn't excel in school, but they still want to go to high school. And if you at least have high school diploma, you can work at a, a big box store or work at a bank and make some sort of living. But without that, their future is precarious. So scholarship program is something that we're also looking at. And we want to continue, thirdly, uh, develop a partnership with churches and schools so that we can identify further needs of the community and share the gospel with them. And last but not least, um, I think this is something uh, I think every church kind of dreams of, but it never really or uh, takes off the ground, and that is to send a couple of midterm missionaries or team to Belize so that we can vet um, who needs scholarship? Uh, we can look into what are the needs of the church, schools. Um, how do we register kids for online tutoring? So all the legwork, all the behind the scene admin things so that we can bring it back to um, Toronto and, and get these things started. So these are four areas that um, we, we saw an opportunities in. Um, and last but not least, uh, I, I'm really proud of the fact that um, there are a handful of you uh, who are taking Luke inductive Bible study, led by David and, and Esther and a few others. And in that, um, what we teach at Bridgeway gets trickled down to VBS. And that, that we're doing Luke, based, Luke Gospel, Luke based VBS. And that same or very similar program gets also transported to Belize. So the things that we learn and things that we um, impart and get the church to be a part of, just know that it has discipleship and missional uh, implications. So I really want to encourage you to learn and, and continue to understand what the Gospel of Luke is about so that you can broaden your uh, scope of discipleship. And that's it for me.